Um, I am Dr. Havercroft. I am new faculty at the Department of Special Education, but I am old to the area. I graduated with both my undergraduate and my master's from EIU. Um, I taught in Mattoon and in Paris and up at Jamaica High School as a special educator for 10 years across those three facilities. So I do know the area a bit. I've been here for a while, but for the last seven or eight years, I have been in Indiana up until this year. I was working on my doctorate with the Hoosiers. Don't shame me, I know I'm sorry. Um, and while I was there, what I did primarily focused on was positive behavior supports. And within that, I had the opportunity to run a federal grant through the Office of Safe and Drug-Free Schools, which funded the training of schools in positive behavior supports. I know in Illinois, there's a great Illinois PBIS network. You have training in the modules and all those wonderful things. Does anybody work at a building that's doing PBIS through the... Okay, so we're pretty familiar with it. Um, in Indiana, it is all homegrown. Just in the last three years, they finally got a grant that is a limited grant to fund some training, but everything else is homegrown. We don't have a comprehensive network. So the grant I had through the federal government, we trained 54 schools just north of Indianapolis in the Hamilton County area um, in school-wide positive behavior supports. And so that's where my training comes from, to be able to stand up here in front of you. And what we found when we were working with these schools is that a lot of schools were struggling with the same things. Bullying, behavior, homework completion, absenteeism, tardiness. The behavioral things were happening the same way over and over. So what a lot of our schools were doing were paying big bucks, bucks for billing programs and trying to at the same time initiate PBIS, tier one of positive behavior supports. So anybody familiar with Oveus? Oveus is a bullying program where you have to pay yearly for surveys of all your students and staff. Um, and then there's training manuals and things, but it's a very expensive program because one of our middle schools had 700 kids, had another 87 faculty and then administration, so they were spending about $900 a year just for the um, surveys you had to do. And they were trying to take that program and tie it to the new PBIS initiative that we were training them in and braid them together. And what they found was there was similar language, but it was conflicting. They just basically had too much going on at one time. Great intentions, but a little too much. So what we're going to talk about today is, first we're just going to talk a little bit about how school-wide positive behavior sports naturally look at bullying and address bullying across the schools through the language we're using, through the lessons we're teaching just for our school-wide initiatives. Then we're going to talk about a program that actually was developed by these same individuals who are accredited with school-wide positive behavior sports, the George Guys and Rob Horners and Tim Lewis's of the world. They actually saw the same thing happen nationally, and so what they did was they developed free programs that naturally tie into PBIS, and we love free. And they are online, they are on PBIS.org, I'll have that link for you. And they're completely downloadable, they're user-friendly, teacher-friendly, free, and they tie right on into everything else you're already doing. So we're just going to talk a little bit through that because we like programs that are free. Um, but to start off with, we're just going to talk a little bit about bullying itself. Okay, just talking about some of the research, and we're going to go through this pretty quickly. I know you've had a lot of bullying research and statistics and information so far today, I'm sure. Um, bullying is known as the most enduring and underrated problem in education. This was 2001. I think as far as underrated, I think it's really gotten, become more prevalent as far as us being aware of it, trying to be proactive, get out in front of it. It's no longer the kind of wait for it to happen and then deal with it. We're having conferences. This is the third one. Okay, there's conferences all over the country. There's books. There's a lot more than there was 12 years ago on bullying. So I think we're doing a better job. But as far as enduring, it's endured for as long as any of us can remember. I doubt anyone in this room survived middle school without at some time either doing some bullying or feeling bullied. Okay, it's something that, and those that came before us, the teachers that were in middle school when we were there, they endured it, and those before them. So this is not a new problem. The difference is, it used to be very reactive. We waited for a kid to come to us who had hit that brick wall 
and it was a complete breakdown. They've just one day too many and they either went off and hit somebody or they just had a complete meltdown and they came to us and then we reacted to it. Then we got that victim some counseling. We pulled that bully in and said, you know better. And we dealt with it in that manner. What we're doing now is really trying to get out in front of the problem. We're being proactive, just like we are with the behavior, social, emotional learning, all of that. We're trying to be very proactive with it and say, what can we do to support the whole school and to address not only the victim and not only punish the bully, but to teach everyone how to handle these situations, including the bystanders. One of the things we've never really addressed much in this realm is the bystander participation. That's something that's just kind of coming in. The kids who would never ever be the one to call somebody a name or call them out, but the five of them standing together that will snicker and look away. Okay, they feed into it, they don't mean to, they don't necessarily know that they are, but so this really addresses everyone in that community, everyone in your school. Um, Bullying is a cross-cultural phenomenon. Bullying is one of those things that we cannot pigeonhole quite as well as we like to do in education, where it's a certain race, a certain gender, a certain um, ethnicity, a certain orientation, or even if you want to go back to Mean Girl education, um, to middle school, to those cliques that we so easily can say, it's the goths, or it's the jocks, or it's the cheerleaders, or it's the Mean Girls. It's everyone. On one side or the other, everyone has either seen bullying happen, been bullied, or been the bully. And maybe multiple of those over the years. So this is something we really need to address school-wide with everyone because it's happening on that level. It's happening for all of our students and it's happening for every clique and every group. Um, one of the biggest things we find with bullying prevention programs, especially those who have been developed research, there are some great things happening. But they really focus on one of two people. They focus on that bully or they focus on the victim. Okay, we either pull the victim aside, tell them ignore it, walk away, tell them we get them help, we give them attention in that manner, we punish the bully, but we don't address everyone else. The difference with these programs is it's something you're going to work through with your faculty, train your faculty on, and then you're going to teach it to all of your students. So just like you teach your tier one initiatives for be respectful or be responsible or be safe, be happy and kind, all those wonderful things, you're going to teach this very much in the same way and it's going to fall right in line with it. When we look at school-wide positive behavior sports, we obviously cannot do that without having the triangle show up today because it it's illegal to do a presentation without the triangle at this point. But in the triangle, when you're thinking through bullying prevention, it falls in tier one, or it should. Traditionally, it's been more of a tier two, tier three intervention because we've waited again until those kids have either had a total meltdown or till there is a bully that is drawing so much attention that we're hearing the name over and over, we're calling them a frequent flyer in the office, those type of things. Or we're seeing this parent come in regularly and every parent that comes through my door is giving me the same name. So then we're looking at it being a very individualized or a small group of kids who are being targeted. So we're looking at tier two, tier three. With the PBIS, we're looking at tier one for bullying prevention. One of the things you already do if you're in a school who's doing any kind of school-wide positive behavior sports is I am sure you teach those behavioral expectations of either be respectful, or if you're with younger people, it might be something like be kind, be caring, be considerate. Okay, somewhere along the expectations, the behavioral expectations you have for your students and that you're teaching, there is language that basically says don't pick on someone else. So you're already teaching that. And just the fact that you're getting that out to all students means you're already being proactive about this. So these new programs, initiatives, will tie directly into that because bullying is all about being respectful. Or if you're doing the bullying, not being respectful. So it falls under, everyone has some kind of behavioral expectation that it falls under. Is there anybody who's in a school that is not doing school-wide positive behavior sports? Okay, because for those programs, even within those, usually there's the five character pillars or something similar, and one of those will address something that's going to cover bullying. 
So it all ties back to using similar language and teaching all our kids the expectations of what we want to see. Now, um, what is bullying? I'm sure you have had enough definitions that you could create your own set of definitions now for bullying after leaving here today. Um, this is just one. I think what they said in the opening session this morning or in the opening remarks about if you read this definition, the pictures I have obviously are more of a school-based, but it can happen outside of school. It happens across the board. We see it in employment. We see it at sporting events. Anybody been to that little league game that you wish you didn't live through because of the parents? Not so much the kids? Okay, that's bullying that we see out there. It happens. So the ideal goal is if we teach them very, very young, like everything else, that by the time they get to this age or out into the world, we're not seeing it in the employment place. We're not seeing it at the local recreation sports centers and complexes. We're not seeing it on Facebook with the 30, 40, and 50 year old crowd because they learned at 10 that it was inappropriate and that there are better ways to express ourselves. Um, this is just a little bit more. Obviously, bullying comes in multiple forms. Today, you've probably seen or heard about cyberbullying, sex. Uh, what is it? Sexting? Um, I go bullying texting. Um, in class, out in the workforce, out in the community. There are a lot of places it happens, but the bottom line is bullies don't bully unless they're getting reinforced for something. There is a re reward, a reinforcement, a payoff for that bully. And that's what we really need to start targeting. The most common ones are the first and foremost is attention from bystanders especially when you're talking about bullying, middle school, high school, those type of situations. The friends who are snickering, or even just the crowd that has gathered, whether they're smiling, laughing, or looking, you know, please look away, don't let it be me next. It's still attention. So from the bystanders. Attention or reaction from the victim. What is the most common thing we tell kids when they come to us and say that they've been picked on or bullied? What is our number one answer to a little kid who says, they won't leave me alone and they won't quit picking on me? Stay away from them. Ignore them and it'll go away. Okay, and to some extent, that may be true. If the bully is getting his, re his or her reinforcement from the actual victim, they like to make someone cry. Or they like to see somebody get so frazzled that they just can't respond. Then that may very well be true. If you can find a way to stay away from that individual, you may not have the problem. Unfortunately, they may find reinforcers somewhere else to continue the process. Or they may just find you. Because kids are very, very determined when they're looking for some of this reinforcement. Um, Self-delivered praise, not as often, but there are kiddos who do not need an adult, a child, a victim, a bystander, anyone else to say they're doing a good job being mean. They really are self-talking themselves. They are finding, and, and we don't know what's going on, maybe there's something else where this is the only place they feel like they have power. But they are doing kind of a self-mantra of, this was good, I did good, I showed them I was stronger. I showed them I was in control, those type of things. Um, or obtain items or activities. We all know the story of you get bullied for your milk money anymore. It's not things like milk money, it's iPads and iPods and fabulous things that are much more expensive. New phones and all those wonderful things. But occasionally you will still see kids going after another kid just to take what they want from the child. Um, one of the things PBIS does a great job with is they really try to go get the biggest bang for your buck. So what can we do that takes the little, littlest amount of time, effort, money, those type of things, but will have the greatest effect for our students? That is not to say that they're lazy or they're trying to get out of going through processes, but they know that teachers are very, very busy and that there are a lot of initiatives, there are a lot of expectations, there is something always new coming down the pike. And so they're very good at trying to compartmentalize and go, okay, how can we make this work but not have it be one more thing? Okay, and so when I do trainings for PBIS, we talk a lot about what do you already have going that's really good that we can build on as opposed to starting over. Let's not scrap things that are working. Um, for, these, for this, one of the first things you can do is put that language in your expectations. 
make sure everyone in your building is using the same language. Whether it's the be respectful, whether it's the be kind, whatever your language happens to be, making sure that student's hearing the same expectation and all the students are hearing it every day in every room. Taking away the praise and attention and recognition that follows from bullying. Okay, so being able to take away, train the bystanders to walk away, to not look, to not engage. Um, train the people on Facebook to defriend. Okay, if you know somebody is just out there having way too much fun picking on anyone that's on their friends list, why do you need that person on your friends list? Defriend. Move on. Um, and to do it without teaching bullying. There has been a complaint over the years that some of the um, programs, store-bought programs and purchase programs, that they actually teach kids how to bully, who may not know how to anyway. With some of the role-playing examples, some of the videos that we show as non-examples, they feel that it actually then shows kids how to be in new and creative ways that they may not have come up with on their own. So this one really tries to stay away from that. They really try and stay away from, in PBIS, they try and even stay away from the word bullying. Okay, just kind of remove it to where we're going to that we're just being respectful to our friends, or we're being respectful to our peers, or we're being kind to our classmates, and taking the word bullying right out of the equation, just so in no way do they feel encouraged. Um, the two programs, we're going to get into kind of talking about the programs. The two original programs that came out, I'm going to pass these out, and there's so few of you, and it looks like you may be kind of grouped. There's three total, and if you would like them, you can have them so you don't have to download them. Um, the first one was the elementary program, K through six. The second one is a middle school program. These were the first two that came out maybe about five years ago. They are free on pbis.org, 100% free. I'm gonna pass them so you can flip through. They have the lesson plans already developed. They have all the information, you, student curriculum one, student curriculum two, the whole thing is in here. So basically you can train yourself, you can train your staff, and then you can teach your students without ever having to spend a dime and all you got to do is download them off the internet. Okay, and they, there is research behind them. They are evidence-based. The, the same website has the research. So if you're going to your administrator and saying, I'd really like us to do this, you, there are research articles. There is evidence to support it. It is an evidence-based practice. It does fit with what you're already doing. And it is 100% free and developed. It's my personal favorite thing. So I'm going to pass that around. Um, the one thing we saw when this first came out was people were using, were really happy with what was there, but there was nothing for the high school. And that's what we would hear because the assumption always has been of with whether it be school-wide positive behavior sports or bullying or that by the time they get to that age, they should what? They should know better. They should already know it. We should not have to be dealing with this. Well, the reality is that's not true. Okay, they don't know it. Now, if we are all successful in what we're doing now with the little people, 10 years down the road, they will know it. And so we will not be ha hopefully having these conversations. But for that 10 year gap, we need something. And so this just came out, they finally came out with a high school version. This is middle school, high school. It's called Expect Respect. I cannot speak as well to this one just because I have not gone any presentations on it. It is brand new, hot off the shelves. But I'm gonna pass that one too in case anybody here will pass that to this group and then you all can switch out. Um, but that is hot off the shelves for high school. Prior to that, what they would do is recommend that people adapted the middle school one. As so often happens with you know curriculum for high school when it's behavioral stuff, we just say, oh, just take the middle school one and make it older, because that's simple. So, but those are the programs. Like I said, they are free. They are evidence-based. Um, I have all the authors on here. When we talk about PBIS and bullying prevention, the big piece of that is it's prevention. It's proactive. We're no longer reacting to the bully. We're proactively teaching everyone how we want them to act, what we expect to see. And so on a school-wide basis, you're doing that with some kind of bullying prevention logic, whether it be an Olveus, whether it be one of these that you choose, whether it be something you have developed within your own school district. Um, one of the big pieces for adopting any of these is that faculty implementation. For school-wide positive behavior sports, it was recommended you had 80% buy-in. I would say you want to have about that for any kind of bullying program as well. 
okay? Because if you don't have, there is a faculty component to this where again, you are asking your faculty to use the same language and the same procedures. To do that, you have to have faculty who is bought in and feels like you need some bullying prevention to happen. Um, then there is the student use. There is a student training component and a teacher training component. And then the advanced supports. The advanced supports we actually do a really great job with. It's the not so advanced supports we sometimes fall down on. The advanced supports are what you're doing already in your schools for tier two and tier three when things have escalated. When we're already getting interventions in on anger management. When we're already getting kids into counseling because they've been victimized by a bully. Those things we're already doing. And we've always done a really great job, I think, or pretty good at the very least, job of trying to support those individual targeted kiddos. The difference is we have not always done a great job with training everybody on what we want to see.